coming into the martial arts was basically uh, just wanted to get into something to stay in shape after when I was in high school and things like that. And I was interested in, in the self-defense and, and uh, learning how to uh, take care of myself and things like that. So, but mostly it was mainly uh, what got me into martial arts is to a uh, way to stay in shape. Being a big Bruce Lee fan, a uh, friend of mine and I sought Dan out to um, learn Bruce's uh, concepts and principles of Jeet Kune Do and learn the art and basically found the school, in, the Normandy school and went down there and, and met him and applied. I stayed with Sifu Dan for all these years because he's, for one thing, he's one of the most one of the nicest guys around. You'll never find a nicer guy than him. He's also one of the most knowledgeable men I've ever met as far as knowing the history and, and, uh, and knowing all the different martial arts systems. He, uh, he's uh, constantly training, he's constantly learning, he's constantly growing, and uh, that's something he's passed on to me, and it's just a never-ending uh, search for, for knowledge that, it, for the martial arts, it just never stops. I got involved in the film industry mostly because it was, it was an interest uh, for making some extra money during the summer. A friend of mine said he can get me in the business. And uh, as I was doing it, I basically got hooked just, you know, watching what was going on, seeing, seeing what everybody was doing. I had also previously, in the past, had a lot of experience in, on stage, doing stage work behind the scenes and things like that. So it was very interesting to me, for, to, me to see the camera, camera guys working and, and them acting and doing doing stunts and things like that. So it just sort of was uh, something that just sort of caught me by surprise and I just got hooked on. When I first saw my very first Bruce Lee film, I was I was like blown away. I had I had previously gone had seen a lot of Hong Kong films going to Chinatown and, and a lot of Japanese films going out in the Crenshaw areas and Toho La Brea and all these and all these theaters. So I sort of grew up with the Hong Kong films and also the, the Japanese samurai films. And when I saw Bruce's film, it was just, just awe-striking. I just, it was phenomenal. I just saw this, this individual who just had such charisma and presence and uh, such power in the way he moved and, and the physical ability was just phenomenal. Bruce influenced my life quite a bit by, by just his training methods and things like that and learning how he, to stay in shape physical ability-wise and also his philosophy his uh, way of training in the martial arts, his, his way of breaking traditional, uh, uh, traditional routes of, of training and also the tr traditional ways of teaching and learning the arts. Um, and just his way of encompassing what was useful in, in, and uh, in all the different styles of martial arts. It was something that was pretty uh, awe-striking at the time and, and, uh, and was quite impressive and I was very impressed by that. Bruce's philosophy in JKD has definitely helped me in, in the way I stunt coordinate and deal with people. Um, it's taught me how to fit in, how to flow with situations, how to um, not be stuck in a certain, in a, in a fixed pattern and, and expect things to be exactly a certain way all the time. It's helped me to, because in the movie industry things always change and, and there may be time constraints or there may be creative differences or there may be um, like the sun may be going down when it's supposed to be a daylight scene or something like that to where you have you have to like change and adjust a lot of things and for you if you're stuck and you want to do something specifically a certain way and you're stuck in that in that um, mindset you'll you'll never be able to change and adjust quick enough a lot of times things have to happen so quickly that you have to really flow with things and, and also with different personalities and different artistic differences so his philosophy in the martial arts is really um, become part of my life. Sifu Dan's teaching a lot of the principles and concepts of JKD, which has helped a lot of us to become uh, very successful in the movie industry as far as doing stunts and stunt coordinating. Uh, he's passed on a vast amount of knowledge of different styles because Jeet Kune Do is encompassing so many different styles of martial arts. So it's really come in handy in, in the movie industry as far as being able to give the producers or directors um, whatever style of fighting that they would like or if there's people that have a certain background or if there's characters that have, have to have a certain background of certain styles of fighting. We've been exposed to almost everything as far as the martial arts um, styles. So it's, it's basically helped us to really fit in and 
know what we're, what they're talking about, if they want capoeira, if they want uh, savat, if they want um, Filipino kali, if they want Japanese, Chinese styles, because we've been exposed to a lot of the different styles, we were able to um, present that and show that and, and also in, as far as on the, on the screen. It also helped as far as if certain actors had certain backgrounds in different styles or even in certain sports, we were able to, to um, use that as, use their background in like if they've golfed or tennis or basketball, to use that as an example to, to pass on uh, the way of the choreography that we're trying to do or the different types of styles of fighting so that we can uh, use that as an example and show the comparison of how they may move in a certain sport and make the adjustments to make them understand things a little bit, a little bit easier and, and let them learn it a lot faster. My opinion of the big boss was it was, it was ahead of its time. It was very impressive. Uh, the, the way the, the choreography was done, the way Bruce fought in the film was, was much different than watching the old traditional ways of uh, the Hong Kong films at the time. He, uh, everything was quite immediate, quite fast. The moves were, uh, would, instead of prolonging a lot of fights and just seeing blocks and punches, blocks, punches, and, and a lot of big master shots, uh, Bruce, Bruce knew how to capture the moments of, of, getting the, of getting a real fight, getting close to a real fight as far as possible. So as the fights were quick, short, unless, unless there's multiple opponents, but you'll never see him fight or he's probably do more than two or three moves on a person at that time, unless it was a one-on-one -on -one fight. But there, the expression, the timing, the beats, the, the rhythm was all completely different than the uh, films that were being produced at the time. It was quite impressive to see Fist of Fury as far as seeing one person take on a whole group of people. Uh, and also was, it, it introduced the Nunchaku in, in, in to, to the cinema as far as the, the audience. I don't think anybody has ever shown that weapon up until that time. So I know I was very blown away by seeing somebody, I had previously used the Nunchuck uh, for, for training and stuff like that, but to see somebody use it with such grace and speed and, and, and uh, God, just the, the amount of speed and, and impact he had with, with that weapon really made it a popular weapon from that time on, everybody was carrying around nunchucks or wanted to learn how to use a nunchaku. But he, that film brought forth a lot of different, um, um, a lot of firsts as far as um, seeing things on, on the big screen. The, the weapon he used, the, uh, the style, the, the way he was fighting was unorthodox. Uh, the rhythm he, was, he fought with, uh, the, the way he took out his opponents on the, in that room and in the other fights was, uh, was quite phenomenal. His kicks, fluidity of kicks, the, the, repeti the amount of kicks he could throw in, in, in repetition was something that hadn't been seen before. My thoughts of Way of the Dragon was, it was, uh, Bruce was coming into his own more, the chore choreography was getting more and more sophisticated. He uh, had the one-on-one -on -one fight with Chuck Norris and that was something that was, hadn't been seen before as, as far as seeing a one-on-one -on -one fight with two gladiators, basically. And um, his moves, the precision, the trapping, uh, hand trapping and, and those type of moves hadn't been seen up, up until the time when he started making his films. I just admired the rhythm, the grace, the uh, the position, the the timing of knowing when to stop and and go as far as letting the audience absorb what was happening with the scene. Because a lot of times things were happening so fast that he'd take beats in there just just so you can absorb what was happening rather rather than continuously going at one pace. So there's a lot of tempo changes and rhythm changes which really helped. Which was uh, a lot of similarities to. Um, dance, dance routines like with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and also with Japanese films and things like that where they take certain beats and certain pauses just so that you can see and absorb what was happening and also just being wide enough to see the moves rather than nowadays where you come in really tight 
and you can't really appreciate the person's physical abilities. I think Enter the Dragon was uh, Bruce's first introduction to a film that was made for an American audience. The previous films were more or less, you can feel the taste of more for an Asian audience, which was brought in it, then brought over here to be shown. But Enter the Dragon, you could tell, was basically filmed with an Amer more of an American style, made for more of an American audience. And I think that was his first big uh, milestone as far as, as becoming uh, a big superstar over here and, and being seen and, and really appreciated for what, what could be done over here with, with American technology. Um, Enter the Dragon, the, uh, this character was, you know, was, was understandably um, uh, forthright as far as what he was trying to accomplish and, and take care of. He, uh, the fights in the, in the, during the prison out in the, and the one-on-one -on -one fights out, outside on the one-on-one -on -one battle, with, the one-on-one -on -one fight with Bob Wall, all those were pretty much hadn't been seen before. The stick fighting, all that stuff was um, something that was quite phenomenal at the time. I think it was interesting uh, for the movie Game of Death that Bruce, Bruce uh, did was that he, he had a lot of different martial artists from different backgrounds that were quite adept at their arts and introduced them to fighting somebody else of different styles. So he would fight somebody of, of um, like Dan, Dan's background with uh, Screamer and Kali and then somebody else with a Korean style. I mean, and, and then also fighting a very tall man such as Kareem. Those were all uh, very much first at the time and just to show how a person had to fit in, adapt, and adjust to different, different fighting methods and also very much an appreciation, showing an appreciation of the other person's expertise in their arts. I thought it was, it was quite phenomenal in that way. I did rapid fire with Brandon. There was a few moves that was sort of an homage to um, his father, and there was certain like scene. There was a scene where we tried to do a. We were doing a master shot of, of Brandon doing a whole trapping sequence, which was supposed to be similar to the the feel of of what we what he did in Enter the Dragon. Also, there's a certain kick, a certain kick that a kick that Bruce did when he in Enter the Dragon when he had Han from the back and and. Uh, kicked his, his heel up and kicked him in the face and Brand, we did that with Brandon. There's, so there's certain things in there to give the feel and also because Brandon and I had talked about it and we thought it would be a kick to, to show that again and do that again. And I don't know if everybody caught it, but it was sort of our, our inside deal of, of trying to just show a certain amount of respect and tribute to his father. And other than that, and there's other movies I've uh, basically, my, my style of choreography is is to give it a certain rhythm, a certain tempo, to tell the story uh, with the fights, to, to incorporate it with the characters so that the character wasn't just all of a sudden fighting and it was just a fight for no reason or there was a fight and the tempo was just straight and, and flat all the way across or just a certain speed. And to incorporate the rhythm, the tempo, the beats, the pauses, the. Yeah, a lot of it was a martial arts fight. I incorporate some trapping because it was very visual oriented, and that's and it was also if the per, if the character was very adept at martial arts, it was something that still hadn't been seen a lot in, in a lot of movies as far as a lot of trapping sequences. Uh, so, yes, I have bought, borrowed some at least the overall uh, concepts and principles of what Bruce was doing in the movies at the time, and and it's it still holds up and carries over today. I use I use Bruce's JKD concepts and principles in, in films all the time. It's, if it's not on screen, it's even off screen. It's just the ability to fit in, adjust, to uh, to just flow with every situation, and and that's as far as off camera. On camera, it's the same situation, but it's uh, it comes in daily, even every day when I get up and and am not even working just in daily life. It's a part of my life. Uh, it's 
It's uh, really taught me a way, it's, it's a way of living. It's something that if, I don't think if I was introduced to it, I'd be, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling I'd be more on a traditional basis, more stuck in, in ex expectations of certain things and wanting certain things to be a certain way and not being able to adjust and fit in with things on a daily basis. Um, as far as on camera, the, uh, it's helped for setting up stunts of not even of fight nature, just of rigging things, of safetying people, of doing car stunts or throwing, having somebody hang off over, over a, a ledge of a, of a building or something. Like in Alley Confidential, there's a lot of situations, for example, where, um, well, in, most, in all the films it came in handy, but I specifically in Alley Confidential, there was a person that had to hang over the, the edge of a building and we actually hung the actor over quite comfortably and, and it made it look quite uh, scary, but it was all done very safely. So it's, it comes in handy for everything as far as outside of just fight choreography. Um, it's for the rigging of everything. It's, it's, it helps to problem solve. You, the director tells you, okay, we want you to, uh, I want you to have this guy jump from here to there and, and run into a car and get hit by a car and all these kind of situations and you have to figure out a way to break it down to make it look quite believable and yet make it all safe and so I use JKD concepts and principles all the time. The elements that made Bruce so memorable are basically his physical ability, his philosophy, his, his screen presence. Um, he, he was able to project a lot of things on screen that I don't think I haven't seen anybody else do up until up to this day. Even he was um, he was quite a phenomenal phenomenal individual, and uh, his films still hold up as far as I'm concerned uh, to the present. As far as Bruce Lee the man and what he's brought forth as far as as an individual to the martial arts, the movie industry, I, I, there hasn't been. One individual that I've seen, and I'm sure Sifu Dan would agree with me, that there hasn't been one individual that I have seen that even has even come close to his mental capacity, his mental ability, his philosophy, his, his physical ability, his, uh, his speed, his agility, his strength, his physique. I mean, overall, he was a unique individual, and I doubt if there'll be another person like him to come, about, come around again. Uh, Brandon had a lot of his father's natural abilities and, and even it even surprised Brandon himself. There's things on screen that we would watch and see uh, as far as Brandon's mannerisms or the way he fought or the way he just looked or did things that was so, we were watching dailies one time and Brandon would look at stuff and say, he goes, let's play that back again. And he'd play it back again on and as far as the footage and we'd play it back again and he goes, wow. And I go, what? He goes, I was trying to figure out who that reminded me of, who I was, who, who I was moving like or who I was, who, who that looked like. He goes, it looked really, it was sort of surprising. And he goes, and it reminded me of, he goes, who did that remind you of? I said, it reminded me of your dad. And he goes, wow. He goes, I'll be damned. There's something to be said for genetics, isn't there? And it was just, you know, it was, it was genes. It was just passed on. And, and I don't think there's anybody else that will ever come along like that, man. He, his way of thinking, the martial arts, the way he tore things apart, put things back together, made it, and just grew and kept, and the whole, whole idea was not to be stuck and bound by certain things and just constantly grow and, and constantly and research things and make things better. And, and it's just, it was just uh, mind boggling and so far ahead of its time. And nowadays you see people training, cross training, doing different styles and mixing different arts and, and their training methods using, using focus gloves and kicking shields and, and, and training to music and doing things to the drum and stuff like that. All that was created, it was started by him. It's just, and now people are doing it and, and people don't realize where it actually came from. And, and it's just, you know, it's something that I know and we know here and, uh, and we, we appreciate and people sort of just, just have done it and, and don't really know the roots from how this all came about. So, um, I, I just, he's just a unique individual that's, that was way ahead of his time.